Hey folks, uh, so today I wanted to show you some more of my old uh, paper computer games. Uh, as you can see, we've got a few of them here. Uh, so, uh, just to give you a little context, uh, in, the, in the last video I showed you the, the first batch of games. And these were kind of like a series. They were following, you know, Pierre's adventures, you know, trying to rescue Zuvac. Um, and then at the end of the second game, they had crash landed on, um, on this planet of Shri. So the third game, the last of the Zarelta was set on Shri, but it was a thousand years in the past. So that was my kind of like breaking away. Uh, you know to do something different like to, to kind of explore my own storyline that was when I kind of broke away from you know imitating you know Chris's uh, paper computer games and started developing my own style um, and but the original plan was after you know this departure you know this this kind of solo adventure following a new character of Ginkus um, I was originally gonna get back to these like Pierre games and you know keep doing what I'd been doing but the Last of the Zarelta was so much fun, like to to do a new thing that I wanted to completely go in a new direction after that. Like I just a after doing this, I just I just needed to explore something like even newer. I need I, I kind of needed to explore what you could do with paper computer games. So uh, that led me to the next game, which was the Mansion of Mystery. Uh, this is the first mystery paper computer game, um, an idea that had never occurred to me before. So, um, and it's sort of based uh, loosely on a real computer game, like an old 90s computer game called, the, it was like the Hugo series, the first one was called Hugo's House of Horrors, but this game is specifically based on the second Hugo game, um, Hugo 2 Who Done It. Um, takes a lot of ideas from that, uh, but, you know, introduces its own characters and so on and so forth. So let's get to it. All right, so the game starts off with a, uh, you know, a little backstory. It explains you are a wealthy British-accented individual, of course. Living in your beautiful domicile, you receive an invitation to visit your cousin Geoffrey in his mansion in the south of England. Hurrying to pack, you book tickets for the flight. And there's you uh, sitting in a chair, smoking a pipe. I wanted to make this as stereotypical as possible. I don't know why, <laughs> apparently. So anyway, uh, so you get onto the flight, and then, you know, he here you are on the plane, and you have to get to your seat. But for some reason, there's all these, like, traps and laser guns, you know, blocking the way. You know, paper computer games still had to be zany, I guess. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so once you get to your flight, uh, you arrive here in the mansion, and you know this is exploring further. You know, as you can see, there's all these doors. This is kind of exploring further the idea that, you know, the idea of letting the player go in any direction they wanted. Um, hold on. A second. So, um, you know, like in the second game. I had kind of explored that with, um, with, you know, like having a hallway with different, uh, doors, but you know, in general, in like paper computer games up to this point had been linear. It had been like, here's a screen, you know, it has a channel puzzle on it. Once you beat that puzzle, you get to the next screen. That's the way it had been. So the second game I had, you know, experimented with that a little bit, and here's where I explore it fully. In this game, the whole game is built around being able to explore different directions and look for clues. So that, in that sense, it was a big departure from what I had done before. Um, and what sets off the action is, like, you look in one of these doors. The door is locked, but you can peek through the keyhole. And here you see your Uncle Jeffrey, and he's being murdered before your eyes. So, uh, obviously, you being a detective, you have to solve his murder, figure out who did it. Um, and over here in the background, you see some paintings. Uh, m the theme I went with, th with this game, with these paintings in the background, is that throughout this game, every time you see a painting, it's going like, it to be a painting of some other paper computer game. It's all nods to the other 
PCGs. So like this one, I don't remember, I don't know what game that is. Oh, I think that must be the game where you first encounter Zuvac because that is definitely Zuvac. Um, I introduced him in the other video. Um, he's a robotic clown on a stick and you know, so that must be Zach like rescuing Zuvac for the first time. Over here we have a dinosaur uh, and I don't remember what game that was, but they're def dinosaurs definitely appeared a lot, so that would have been one of those. So, you know, you go around exploring. Like, this over here is the kitchen, obviously. You can find garlic in one of the cabinets, you know. You can go outside into the... Like, this is a door to the outside of the house. Um, and outside the house, there's just a giant maze screen. I'd been improving... Um, my maze screens like at first they were kind of you know half-assed they were kind of like not really mazes at all so this so this one I wanted it to really be a complex maze so I really went all out unfortunately I just went too far and made it kind of visually confusing as you can see it's it's just like um it's just uh you know just a mess but you know obviously you had to get the key there's like a little tree over here um, yeah, this room is kind of a study, um, yeah, there's like, a the, the drawer is locked, you have to use the key, I think the one key you got in the maze to open it and see what's inside, there's like a little ID card acceptor, so like, you can open that up to get stuff if you can find the ID card. Uh, the painting over here, you got a flight screen that, I mean, that could be from any PCG, but, you know, it's just like a typical a flight screen, like the one in, uh, in my first game, you know, oh, this one, yeah, it could, so it could just be that, this over here is another flight screen, uh, that's the one from The Last of the Zarelta, which was the previous game, uh, that is over here, yeah, because you're a little UFO and you have to get past two bigger UFOs, so it was a painting of that, so... Because that was the theme in this room. And I guess, um... So, in the drawer, I think you find this, um... This, this memo. So this, this is the first time I'd experimented with that. Um, gain clues through, like, written notes. Dear UBPE headquarters, Everything is going according to plans. The old man has agreed to give us the money we deserve. This, by the way, oh gosh, I, I was really into languages at the time, and this is an old English letter, a letter that was part of the English alphabet, but fell out of use uh, a long time ago. And it's, it's, it's like, it's called Thorn, and it's supposed to be like, it, it makes the same sound as T-H. So instead of T-H-E, it's Thorn E. Um, and I just wrote that because, I don't know, I was nerdy at the time, I guess. Uh, not that I'm not now, but, you know, anyway. The old man has agreed to give us the money we deserve. At this rate, still using thorns, at this rate, Target X will be ours in no time. I'm going out for chips now and will write again when I get back. Mwahahaha. Yours truly, Agent X. All right, so that's interesting. We don't know who that is and then there's there's more another letter dear ubpe oh expletive the old man's dead what do we do boss i didn't intend for this to happen honest i think my sister may suspect what we're up to she's smarter than she seemed at first and that fat man him and his damn intergalactic organization keep causing us trouble mwahahaha yours truly x so um You'll see who, you know, who wrote this, and you'll see who the sister is and whatnot. The, 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 the fat guy, we've seen him appear in, you know, two other games so far, but, you know, I'll, we'll see him, and so I'll introduce him then. But the Intergalactic Organization, I think that is supposed to be referring to the company, who I introduced in, you know, the first game, the Evil League of Evilness. Um, and I was envisioning it as an evil... Uh, an e like an evil organization that extends past the earth it's part of an intergalactic alliance later I I uh, reimagine that so it's not like the company itself is not an interstellar uh, intergalactic organization it's just 
but it is a member of an interstellar union. So, um, anyway. So we have a bathroom. Uh, this is kind of like an overhead view, and there's some clues written on the mirror. Let's see, what does that say? To no time. Huh, interesting. I don't remember what that is from. Um, oh, that's right. The, like, in this bathroom, there was something you could do, and like... It, there's like a secret passage under this bathroom. If you like turn one of these handles the right way or something, um, based on the clue in the mirror, the, like I think the toilet moves aside and behind it there's like a hole that goes down um, underground. And then underground there's this whole screen where you have to go and there's these like giant bugs you have to get past. And then there's there's another entrance to this underground area that, like, later on, you have to get to both places. Over here, there's, like, a, a genie in a bottle. That's kind of a reference to Hugo, too, who done it. Because in that game, there was also a genie in the bottle, and, you know, that was pretty helpful. Um, so, you know, I thought it would be nice here. Anyway, um, I don't remember what that is. But, well, anyway, like, you find a clue. You definitely find a clue down here. Um, over here is the library, uh, some important books in here, I'm sure, yeah, there's gonna be more stuff to read, but, um, these paintings, this is a reference to one of Chris's old games from when we were kids, this is like, this was a game where I had to learn karate in that game, um, this one is just from the, uh, the second game I made, the, uh, the, the uh, alien abduction because you know this is kind of the the mansion like when you first come out at the beginning of that game you come out behind Rorick's mansion like see right here so that's what that's a painting of um, anyway so you you dig out the books it has some notes in it January 24th 2003 man I, I uh, dated it my plots have failed for the last ten years. For all that time, I've been trying to kill Master Jeffrey. But tonight, it will work. All I need is a little more time. My plan is flawless. Alexander. So that's some pretty damning evidence against Alexander. Um, and here's some more. January 25th. I'm using a thorn for the TH. I have the gun. Ah, see... This is actually not a thorn. This is another old English letter that fell out of use. This is called, like, Ev. And it also makes a TH. But see, there's two different kinds of TH sounds that in it, nowadays we, we use TH for both of them. But, you know, just like, anyway. Um, so this is another one of those. And this is the capital form. It's like a D with a line through it. Anyway, I have the gun. Everything is in place. This gun won't break. My master has but a few precious hours to live. My only challenge is getting that fat guy out of the way. Alexander. Uh-oh, looks like some pretty damning evidence against Alexander. What do you guys think? Did he do it? So anyway, we have more hallway and more doors to explore. Uh, we have a painting. I think this is of the alien ship, like, from the second game, where I, you know, first explored with letting the player go wherever they wanted, the hallway with the different doors. Over here, I think that is supposed to be a, a painting of the map screen at the beginning of The Last of the Zarelta. Yeah, like, the, the planet of Shri, but, you know, obviously rendered not that good. Um, and I can't see what that is supposed to be. But, oh, we have, here is the fat guy. Um, and the fat guy, as I explained in the last video, he's a classic character from Chris's games. He's always blocking the path. He's gleef gleefully loves blocking your path. You can't climb past him, you know, whatever else. This time, I, like, he is blocking your path to a corridor back here, but he's also a suspect for the murder in this case. So I, I kind of wanted to give him a... A, a, like a little bit of a different an updated role like do let him do something different than he usually does 
The paintings in this room are both of uh, previous fat guy screens. This is the one from The Last of the Zarelta where he's like, he's actually the skinny guy, like, and that's the origin of the fat guy, that he starts out skinny and you have to, you have to make him grow to get past him. The other painting over here, this is from the second game where, uh, where he's, it's kind of like this top down view and he's, you, you know, you have to get past him. So that was, uh, that's what those paintings are. And you know, he's, he's kind of like wearing a suit. See, he like, he dressed for this whole mystery setting. Um, anyway. So you get past him and, and like in the back there, there's another note. Well, this is a, his journal, I guess. This is the first time we're kind of seeing into the mind of the fat guy because we have his, his journal. Uh, I gained 500 pounds today, yes. Unfortunately, there isn't enough food in this house. I've been sent here by the United Alliance of Evil, skinny bastards. Like, the United Alliance of Evil, again, that that it was what I was calling the company. But, um, yeah, later on, I reimagined it such that the company is a member of an alliance that, that spans the galaxy. So, um, yeah, so... But I guess this is not inaccurate because the company is part of an alliance, so. I've also dropped the whole name United Alliance of Evil. Now I just call them the Alliance because this is a little bit cheesy. But, you know, at the time I was trying to be more cheesy than I am now. I still am a little bit cheesy, but, you know, I, I, I moved away from it being so cheesy since then. Um, but I'm definitely still not afraid to dive into cheese when necessary. Anyway. Fat guy says, I'm supposed to spy and make sure Jeb or Jeff or whatever his name is doesn't give to the, mo the money that, to that other group, whatever they were called. Signed, Fat Guy. So it seems like there's a lot going on here. I mean, on the one hand, we have the United Alliance of Evil. On the other, the other notes, we had UBPE, whatever they were. So who knows what that is all about. And here is Alexander. Um, he is the your uncle Jeffrey's butler and if you'll if you'll recall uh from like from one of these notes he said that he you know he's the one who ha like he has the notes that say that he's trying to kill his uh, like trying to kill uncle Jeffrey he's like not even closed about it like even if you talk to him about it now he's like maniacal he's like ha, 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 ha. yes i succeeded in kill you know he doesn't say i killed Uncle Jeffrey. He says he didn't do it, but he wanted to, and he was trying to. So, that is uh, pretty suspicious. Paintings on the wall, like, this is from one of Chris's old games. Uh, th this is where, like, I had to infiltrate a, a, a Nazi base. Um, so this is like an overhead view of the base. It's kind of in the middle of the desert. This one is the, the boss fight from the second game where you had to fight Roshi Veg. He's the, the, the Tritosian alien, this guy over here. Um, so yeah, this is, this is you, the, the, the uh, British accented individual, whatever. I later named him Charles, by the way. Um, so now we're meeting um, somebody else. This is Zandria. Um, and she is openly a member of an organization called UBPE, as you can see by the banner. Uh, UBPE agent is here. Uh, this painting is from the very first ever paper computer game Chris made when we were little kids. This was, uh, I had to escape from from the house, like, g escaping out the window, and I had to, cl like, jump onto the apple tree and climb down it. Anyway, so, uh... This is Andrea. She's very happy-go-lucky. She's f super friendly, um, and she has a diary. And then here's her diary entry: Andrea's diary. Like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be working for UBPE. I'm surprised that Jeffrey's dead, though. If anyone's reading this, I didn't kill him, really. Andrea, agent of UBPE. So then we have. Uh, we, we go across the hall and we meet her sister, Zandiria. See, that was Zandria. Now we got Zandiria. And, uh, you know, the paintings over here, we have, um, this is like one of the old, Chris's old 
uh, PCGs where we we had like got a spaceship and landed on an alien planet. This is one like Kurt's first paper computer game actually. Like at the time, he Kurt had recently I I'd shown him my PCGs and he'd been inspired to try making his own. So this is a nod to his first one. Like there was an invisible enemy and you had to like shine a, like a mirror at him to be able to see him. Um, so anyways, Anderia is kind of, she is, uh, more down to earth than her sister. She's, she's, uh, doesn't claim to be working for the UBPE. She's just, she's just, uh, you know, helpful, friendly, you know, and, and kind of cool and collected, unlike her sister. Um, and she seems kind of suspicious. Um, so then this was the, uh, whodunit screen. This is, wh like, this is, which is a nod to Hugo, too. And basically, um, this is, like, the end of the game, and the, the idea is that we've gathered all the suspects together, everyone who could possibly have done it. This is you, and here's the cops have come. You got Alexander, you got the fat guy, you got Xandria and Xanderia sitting back to back, and, um... Yeah, you had to, you had to, like, the cops say, well, which one of them did it? And you had to figure out who was guilty, and, um, the correct answer was Xanderia. Xanderia, because she did it for the UBPE, they were, they were, competing with the with the uh the company the, or, which in this game we call the united alliance of evil and uh yeah so that is uh you had to you had to piece that together um the paintings in this room like this is obviously the cover of this game the mansion of mystery and you know and this was supposed to be a representation of the next game in the series this is a spaceship flying through the air. Not through the air, through space, obviously. And um, I had a really ambitious plan for this next game. Um, I won't get into that in the next video, but um, this game did eventually get made, and it became the biggest paper computer game of all time. But um, I didn't... Like, I started working on it, but it was so big that I didn't finish it until much later, until after I had finished a lot of other PCGs. And it took... It took it actually, honestly, took a decade to finish this game. So this, is, so this painting is kind of like beckoning to the future of PCGs. So, um... Yeah, that is this game. Um... Uh, the, like... He had a notebook, like he was taking notes. Alexander, uh, yeah, well, anyway, I'm not sure what it was. Um, okay, so that was the Mansion of Mystery. I had a lot of fun doing this game, like, uh, you know, trying new things, like allowing the player to explore in any direction, you know, leaving clues, and you have to actually figure out what's going on as a player rather than just, you know, get to the end and then you win. So that was a radically new kind of PCG that I never really uh, experimented with before. And really, I should do more with that. So that's that one. Next one we have today is When Evil Flows in Freeness. This is a really bad cover. Um, uh, It's like, this is a hastily made game. This, is like, isn't as good as the previous games, but I'll just show it to you briefly anyway. Um, because it is, you know, kind of relevant, it becomes relevant later on. So this, the point of this was to introduce my, our friend Cassie into paper computer games. And she played it, but she didn't really like it, be possibly because it was such a poorly made game. Uh, who knows? But anyway, so this was the, her first and last game. Anyway, so it starts with, you know, her, Cassie, and she's just... You know, lying in a strange... Like, she just wakes up in a strange bed, doesn't know where she is. She has to escape. The um, I don't remember what the puzzle was with these buttons, but, but the way to escape is you have to, like, do something to break this floor, and then you can fall down 
uh, to the screen below that. And then, so you follow them through the hole and, and land here. Um, and there's all these things like there, there's like a little doll there's a blender there's a dead squid there's an etymology book and a baseball and i think um the puzzle was you had to activate a trap door that lets you fall down again you fall down and then oh it's the fat guy you know there's always a fat guy puzzle um I think like the puzzle here was just that the floor was weak. Like as you may be as you may have noticed, like in this game the theme is that every every screen the 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 solution is to fall down to the screen below it somehow. Like you think like you have to get past the fat guy to the door, but the solution is to to break like cuz the fat guy is sitting on floor that's weak, you have to like cause it to collapse and then you fall down with him. And you fall into a maze screen, and here's here he is, is where he fell, and so you have to, uh, you know, these are all, these all go into a certain death. You get past these guys, and uh, there's another hole to a to a lower screen, and boom, you fall. And this is the boss of the game. His name is Kranya Humpto. Uh, at like. I, I don't know what the idea with this is. Like, he's just a giant guy for some reason. He's a Japanese guy. And at the at the time, like, Cassie was really into anime. So we wanted to make a character who just, like, super hates anime. But, like, fell flat. Because when she played it, it's like... Uh, he's like, oh my god, I hate anime. And she's like, okay, that's that's fine. You don't have to like the same things I like. Um, so she, but, uh, he attacks her anyway, so she, uh, so she had to defeat him, um, and, yeah, so she beat him, and she falls down one last time into a bin, and it's to be continued, and, um, even though, like, but it actually, was, well, Cassie didn't like this, so I wasn't gonna make another game for her, obviously, um, but her character does reappear later on, so in a sense, this will be continued. And then we have her inventory screen, and that is that. All right, so next is the ancient secret under Shri. So this is getting back to the planet of Shri, which, as you'll recall, Pierre and Ari had crash landed on in this game, uh, in the second game, like, they crash landed on it, and then, um, in the last of the Zorelta, we, we saw the full map of it, and we explored, you know, the, the history of this planet. We saw, you know, King Ginkus trying to escape a thousand years ago from his capital building, you know, the Croton Rebellion have taken over, and, you know, Ginkus, at the end, he, uh, he climbs to the he yeah he climbs to the to the top of the tower and at the top he takes up this iconic stance with him holding his staff above his head um, and he seals off the tower for a thousand years in a stasis field and that is where it's been ever since so in this game the ancient secret under Shri we are finally getting back. To that whole storyline um so this returns to pierre and ari and uh oh it has a it has a written backstory so i'll just read it to you your name is ari so this time like instead of focusing on pierre i'm focusing on ari i wanted to introduce him to this stuff rescued uh you rescued from the house of rurik your sister and zuvak a clown on a stick who fights for good that's zuvak uh, Palm, that's Pierre, that was our nickname for her, uh, helped you on this adventure, and together, Yupala escaped, oh gosh, uh, yeah, I, I was into, I was into languages at this time, and I always had to put these stupid, you know, nods to other languages, in some obscure dialect of English, Yupala is a way of saying you, but plural, so it's like saying you guys, y'all, so anyway, uh, together, Yupala escaped and were abducted by aliens. And so here's uh, Roshi Veg, the boss of the second game again. 
After depositing Zuvac in an item box which disappeared into the past, Eupola escaped from the ship on a shuttle. Eupola crashed from a strange world. I really wanted to draw attention to this word, didn't I? Um, you, um, anyway. So, you escaped from the ship on a shuttlecraft. Here's you escaping, and you crash land on a strange world. Unsp unbeknownst to you, the world is known as Shri, and its fate shall affect the fate of the entire galaxy. So, here you, you have crash landed somewhere, like, back here, I guess. And you find yourselves on a road. So, you and... So, this is Ari, and this is Pierre, and you're just kind of, like, walking down the road. And... Um, I kind of expanded on, you know, the, sh the Shri we, we saw before. At the end of the last of the Zarelta, we kind of saw a few buildings, which is um, Pierre's, uh, sorry, Ginkus's. Uh, yeah, we saw, we saw, like, this is Ginkus's capital building, and then there's these, like, two buildings to either side of it. But this was, like, all we had seen of the entire city. Now... We can see the city is kind of like this full cityscape. And then here is Ginkus' uh, capital building again. It's still protected by the stasis field Ginkus put up a thousand years ago. Here's the two buildings to either side. This is the one that Ginkus climbed to the top of and then hang glided over to get back into his tower at the end of the last of the Zarelta. But as you can see, now there's this giant imposing new tower um, that is, has been erected and it's totally dwarfing Ginkus's old tower. And the idea here is that the, like in the thousand years since Ginkus's adventure, the Crodin, uh, have completely taken over. They've been in charge the entire time and, you know, they couldn't access Ginkus's building to take control of that and make that their capital. And it's just standing there as kind of like a symbol of, you know, it's kind of like spitting in the face of the Crodin because, like, it's like they can't get rid of him and he's still there as, like, king. So, it, since they couldn't get rid of it, they couldn't get through the stasis field, instead they wanted an, uh, uh, to, to show their strength. So they built this giant tower with spikes sticking out of it to show, you know, totally dwarfing Ginkus's tower to show their superiority. So you've got, like, little spaceships kind of patrolling the the skyline here of course Pierre and Ari don't know anything about this and I kind of started exploring the um the technology of Shri here we see that there's like this metal spherical thing which is kind of like it's supposed to be a power plant and these are kind of like street lights alongside the street and they're all metal spheres and electrical power just kind of like shoots from the this metal sphere uh into these these spheres and it transfers from one to the other and one to the other and this sphere technology with like electricity jumping from one to the other this would become a theme with me and it would, it would make it into a lot of my drawings and later back into my pcgs but anyway so this is where the game picks up and uh ari uh you know kind of wants to explore over here there's all these devastated buildings and this was once the road that curves and leads to Ginkus' capital tower, but it's long been abandoned and it's broken down and there's all these abandoned buildings along the side of it. There's nothing interesting in any of them, but there is this strange jewel on the, on the street. And when he picks it up, he falls down into a, a cavern and, uh, and he winds up in a maze screen. And by the way, Pierre gets separated from him. She stayed on the road while he went to look around. So she does not come with him. So this game marks where Pierre and Ari get separated. And um, later on, they would each get their own games, you know, their separate adventures on the planet Shri. But anyway, so uh, Ari falls down. I think he lands here. And... Um, so, yeah, he has to explore this maze. Uh, there's a giant lobster. There's some dudes. There's some, you know, items you had to collect. There's there's the fat guy. Uh, instead of making a full fat guy screen this time, I just I just made a, you know, him blocking a passage in the maze, which, which is blocking the exit to the maze. I think there were a couple of teleporters 
in here, which led to these kind of like chambers. Here is some more of the sphere technology, like metal spheres, and there's some more spheres kind of hovering around them. And you could find in here there was like there was some strange little spheres that you could get, and they ha held data on them. And I think later on, you could you could find out what was on them. Anyway, so you go. So once you get past the fat guy, you go up here. So this was like this whole elaborate trap. Here's like a giant stone being held up by these ropes, and this is like a laser gun that can shoot the ropes. This is a button that if you press it, like I think it releases the 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 uh, the uh, cage holding this this prisoner dude. But it also like causes this to fire and the stone falls smushing you. So you had to figure out how to release him without smushing yourself. And I think basically the trick was to get rid of the... Like throw something up onto the laser gun and that was how that works. And this guy, his name is uh, Chennai. And he is one of the Zarelta people. So he claims that he is, you know... He, from a tradition of people who are still loyal to King Ginkus, even after all this time, and they're sort of like resisting the Crodin, but he's been captured by the Crodin, the evil Crodin Empire who control this planet now. So he and Ari team up, and they're exploring together for this adventure. And you know, here's a hallway. This is more of me letting players, um, you know, explore in whatever direction they want. You know, you can go forward or you can go to the right. Um, and if you go to the right, uh, oh, it's Cassie again. This is like the exact same screen from, uh, the end of When Evil Flows and Freeness. Cause like, I don't know, I didn't want this game to be just random and have nothing to do with anything. I wanted to kind of have everything, you know, like roll in and be part of the same storyline. So this is the, so this was the screen at the end of her game, only now... Like, Ari and, and uh, Chennai walk up right at the moment when she has fallen into this bin. And we find out that this To Be Continued was actually just, like, graffiti on the wall. Like, as you can see, I kind of started trying to do it in, uh, in uh, perspective, so it looks like it's on the wall, but then I got lazy and just, like, said, forget it, I'm just going to write it. Anyway, uh, Cassie joins their party. Cassie wasn't physically playing. Like the, the like this game was only played by Ari. So Cassie and Chennai are his like kind of sidekicks. He has his own his whole little party now. And anyway, they go on. They they continue down the the corridor. And uh, here we come to a room like this has all these like metal spheres in it, and one big metal sphere. And these are all you know spheres with data in them and then you can keep going through the doorway and then here's a hall like and I gave you a lot of doors I don't think a lot of them are accessible I think only like one or two you could actually go through I don't know why I drew so many doors if none of them are available but this room was like a holographic room you could put the big metal sphere in here and it tells you the whole story of Shri it explains how Ginkus was the king and then the Croden took over um, and also, I think there was a smaller amulet you get. I'm not sure if it's here. But it, you let, it lets you put the smaller metallic spheres in it, and it projects a little hologram. Um, so, yeah, then this was just a, a short series of challenges. You had to get past this guy with a sword, then you go up the ladder, it goes up here. You have to climb up the rope, and then you have to jump, you know, get over the spikes, get over the spikes, go down here. There's an elevator. Elevator goes all the way up here jump in the chute, chute goes over to here. This is a platform which I think you have to, there's a puzzle, you have to get it to break through the ceiling and it goes up to here and then finally you get out that door and, and you come to this door and it, it, like all you have to do is place a crystal in it which you found earlier and then it opens up and I'm pretty sure that is the end of the game. You escape from the game here. Here we have the uh, inventory screen you, know, you got a jewel, which is what you placed there. You got your boomerang, hypodermic needle shooter. I don't know why. Twin guns, chocolate donuts, slim fast. That was to beat the uh, 
the fat guy. And you get, oh, and yeah, here's the, here's the amulet that when you put metallic spheres in it, it, it makes a holographic projection. You can get a little bit of backstory. Oh, and here's uh, the script, like, to remind myself what everything does. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, that's all for now, folks. Um, so this game would, um, w marked the beginning of my returning to the planet Shree, and I would keep doing that a lot. Like, the planet Shree is going to get explored a lot. I noticed that every paper computer game maker has one like planet or universe or you know some place they keep coming back to and exploring more and more and for me that seems to be Shree for 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 Pierre that's like Saluna for Kurt that's the planet Zoniat Zoniat however you pronounce that like e each person has their own maybe if you guys try making paper computer games you'll you'll find some as well uh, or, or come up with a new one or or whatever um, I mean, my thing is I definitely like visiting, you know, making games that have characters and settings from other people's games as well. Like, I like this whole thing to be one co cohesive universe, but, but I do have this, and I definitely have new worlds I visit as well. It's not all just Shri, but I definitely return to Shri a lot, and it's one of the best explored places. And even still, I kind of want to explore it some more. There's a lot that hasn't been investigated there. But in any event, uh, so yeah, that uh, I guess that's all for now, folks. Um, that we've explored these three games. Next time we'll explore the next bunch. Um, as you can see, I got like I really got comfortable with like going in new directions, doing things that hadn't been done before. And then with this one, I kind of returned to you know, what we've been doing originally with, you know, following Ari and Pierre, and it's just kind of like a basic standard kind of paper computer game, but I incorporated some of the, some of the tricks I'd learned from, you know, from the last of the Zarelta and the Mansion of Mystery, and I was getting more into developing the story of it, you know, getting more into exploring, you know, the mythology of the planet Shri and King Ginkus and all that stuff. So in the next uh, video, we will see how, uh, you know, we'll see how these themes get explored further. So uh, thanks for watching, folks, and uh, have a nice day.